Hi, my name is Nick with EvolvingPixels.com and today we are going to learn how to mask with text. Let's get started, shall we? First thing I'm going to do is go to File, Place, and find the image that I want masked. Next, we are going to type our text. You can press the letter T and that will activate your text tool. And we'll type in mask text. Now notice I went over here to the panel. This is your uh, select tool. And you want to use that to get out of the type tool. Let's place this text. Eh, that looks good there. Now very importantly, before we use this text as a mask, we need to make sure that it is outlined. Now to do that, you could right click and or you could open Apple Click. If you have a Mac, go to Create Outlines. This will single out each individual letter. We want to copy this. And we could actually delete this after it's copied. Now you normally I go to Control C, or if you have a Mac you can press uh, Command C. You can also have it up here, edit, copy. Once that's copied, we could just delete that. Now, we select our image. I want you to notice over here in the corner, there is a blank section right next to your actual image. If you just double click that, that will activate the opacity mask layer. Now, all we have to do is now paste our text into that layer. So, we want to paste in place. Uh, the shortcut for that is Control F or Command F if you have a a Mac. And notice that we can now see our text, but it's only outlined. So very importantly, make sure that this box here, Invert Mask, is selected. Now we need to get out of this layer before we could do anything else, so we need to click back on the image layer here. That'll bring us back uh, to where we need to be at. This is the layer. Now, um, I have a problem here. I can't really see the text very well because of the light and dark tones of the image behind it. Uh, to put a mat now, we want to put a stroke around this. Uh, a quick and easy way to do this: we already have the text on our clipboard, so let's just copy and paste it again. This creates a new layer. Notice the layer here. Now, before we get confused, let's type in. Uh, let's call this layer our stroke layer. Now the bottom layer is our mask layer. Let's name it mask layer. I recommend doing this because sometimes you'll have numerous amounts of layers and they can get a little bit messy if you don't name them. So let's just take the, well, you know what? Let's lock the mask layer because we don't need to do anything with that right now. Now locking the mask layer will, will make uh, it in pretty much invisible to any type of uh, function you want to have with that layer, so just so it doesn't get mixed up with any other layers. You might be uh, moving this layer around and you just don't want to select that layer. You just lock it. So we want to take the stroke layer, we want to drag it right below the mask layer. Now, this is where the lock comes in handy because if I click it, the mask layer is locked, and it's actually clicking the stroke layer. Now we go up here, you'll notice we have a fill, and we have a stroke. Notice there isn't a stroke on the text. We want to we'll make it black. Uh, it helped a little bit, but it's not quite what I wanted. Let's zoom in here. We wanted it a little bit more dominant. So let's go to the stroke weight here which is right next to it. Now make sure that it's selected and we'll give it two. Two is pretty good. I could I can make out the text now. And there you have it. Now that's one thing you can do with it. Well, what if you it could be a little bit boring if you want to spice it up a little bit. Maybe maybe add a reflection or something. Very simple. What we can do is just unlock the mask layer. So, what we want to have to do is 
select both, just drag and click so we select both layers. And we want to group these. You can go to uh, Object, Group, or you can press Control G or Command G for, for uh, a Mac. Now this took those two layers and put them together into one, and you'll notice it down here. Let's just uh, copy this, Control C, and paste in place, Control F or Command F, and now we have two of the same layers. Let's just lock the uh, bottom layer so that we don't interact with that, because what we really want to do is work with the top layer. We want to rotate this, and what we can do is you can right click, go to transform, or you can open Apple Click for Mac, and go to reflect. Make sure that it's reflecting on the horizontal axis with an angle of zero degrees, and you'll notice that it's now it's getting there close to a reflection. I want to click that. If you hold down shift and move your arrows, it'll move it a bit quicker than if you were just clicking with arrows. The arrows are more a little bit more precise. You just click it a little bit rather than shift clicking. You notice that there's a big difference in space. So let's just have those touch right about right about there looks okay. There we go. All right. Well, it doesn't really look like a reflection so mu as much as maybe you'd like it to. That's because we should probably change the opacity on that. Now, we could do this really easily. What we want to do is let's lock that layer. Let's go up here. Okay, so we select the rectangle tool here. I'm going to drag it across the bottom. Cover up the majority, well, all of it. Let's make sure we remove the stroke and we want to do a fade to white fill here. It's starting to get there. But what we're going to do is let's first select that opacity layer. Let's name this uh, fade. Fade out. I like that. And what we want to do is we want to adjust the white fade. We go here, make sure it's make sure the fade out layer is selected. We go here and let's make that slider 90%. And let's go to this one and make it 50%. And angle this at 90 degrees. And move the middle slider here so we get a bit more of a fall off there at the bottom. And that will work. Now, if you have a white background, this works out perfectly fine for you. But if you want to put something in the back of the background, you're going to get a funny white box. So to do this properly, I'll show you just a quick example of what I mean. What we're going to have to do is, we will, we will have to create an opacity map using your fade to white gradient, which we already made. All we have to do is select your fade to white, copy, remove it, and let's unlock the reflective layer because we need that selected. And we need to go back here into the opacity layer, so let's double click that. Let's copy, or I'm sorry, let's paste in place. That's Control F or Command F. And what? And also, we have to click back out of that layer. Remember because we don't want to be in the opacity layer. We click out here, and now we are in the image layers. So now, it's transparent to any color that you put in the back. So, that'll do it for this tutorial. I hope that this helped you learn some very basic, yet commonly used functions that you'll be using uh, in future projects. Leave me any comments or suggestions that you would like, and view more tutorials on EvolvingPixels.com.